Hi and welcome to a first of a series of tutorials on Python programming. Now before we get going we have to get it up and running on our computer. So I'm using a, a desktop PC running Windows as you can see here and the first thing I need to do in getting us going is download the Python interpreter. So we simply do that by going on the website python or you can google python.org and it will get you to this website and then we want to download click on the download section and select either Windows or Mac OS depending what your machine is and then simply download the Python program now this will download both the interpreter and the editor to use now we call the editors IDEs integrated developer environments and we're going to be using in a series of tutorials here both a combination of these and others that I'll show you in a second so this is IDLE this is where we can write our programs in here and, and, and learn how to code. I, I will show you the others. So there's another very popular one called Visual Studio Code. Um, I, you can download this, download this from the Microsoft Visual Studio website called Visual Studio Code and download it, run it. And again, similar to IDL, but slightly more advanced, gives you more features, more sections, although for the beginner it can be a little bit hard because you have to set it all up because it supports lots of different languages. I've just set it up here for Python. Another very popular one is called Pway Charm, the community edition. You can download it, install it, and it looks a bit like this. Thony, similar to IDLE, uh, much simpler, again, nice visual display runs it and you can see your program output down the bottom here another very popular one is spider uh, again similar to the others but extra features apparently very good at uh, GUI design um, now they're the sort of on your computer type editors you can use what we call the browser or online editors and basically the advantage of using those is you don't need to set up anything it's there it exists and one of these is called Replit which is, is very popular you sign up for it on the website and then you get something that looks a bit like this you then create your Python program by simply typing in Python and again it supports lots of different languages um, and then I can just type in my program there and you can see I've already written a whole series of, of programs on here. Okay, so that's Replit. The other one is called Trinket. Again, very, very popular. And on Trinket, you can simply, again, create a, a simple program in the online window. You run it and it will give you the output on the other side like that. So, and there are others out there. I've just shown you the two most popular ones. I hope that's good get you started get running and then we'll now go on to the first part of our tutorial which is actually learning how to do some simple python programs so in this first part of the lesson we're going to look at the basics of python and how we create our first programs so here we have the IDL shell. Now this is when you open up IDL, you'll get this, what we call this is the, the console where you can basically just type in uh, commands into Python and press return and you do one command at a time. So if you just want to do some quick calculations or you want to test a few uh, functions then this is where you would do it. So for example, I'll just type in the fu function print hello. And what this is doing, it's calling a function called print and then all functions normally follow brackets and then we put values in those brackets called parameters so the parameter here is a string i.e text so the text is in always in quotes hence it's in green and we type in the text hello and when we press the enter command it will run that and we'll get the word hello we can also in the console do some basic math so we can say 10 divided by 5. <clears throat> notice we've used to divide we use the forward slash so that's how we that's the console the next stage is the actually writing our, our first program and to do that we go file we go new file and we get up a new text file that's a, this is the text editor uh, i.e the source file that's going to be used to create the python code which will run on the computer now i'm going to type in again a simple program which is just going to output the contents of that string, that text, to the screen. Now, before I run it, I have to save it, and I would recommend saving it in a folder that you're going to use a lot or somewhere where you're going to be able to find it. I'm just going to save mine in my work folder. Um, 
I'll send it, let's put in my year nine, and then in here I'm just going to call it my first program, or for my first pog. And it will show you there the name of the file that you've saved and where you've saved it. And now we've saved it, we can now run it. So we'll run, and there you go, it's come up, hello world. And there you can see the, 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 the what I was doing in the console earlier. So <coughs> that is the output for our first program. So now I'm going to show you basic arithmetic operators. So I've written a simple program here that demonstrates each operator. So for addition, we use the plus sign. For the subtraction, we use the dash. For division, we use the forward slash. And for multiplication, we use the star. And if I was to run this program, you'll get the, at the outputs of each one of those calculations. So if I run it, you'll see there that we've got the outputs of each calculation. Notice that the five, 10 divided by 2 is giving me a decimal answer, so 5.0. What is a variable? A variable stores a temporary value in the computer's memory and is referenced by a symbolic name. We typically do this in programming by simply naming the variables and then assigning them values. In this example, I'm defining the variables x and y to equal the values 10 and 20. This will create two locations in memory, for example, locations 1 and 2. Each of these locations in memory storing the values assigned, in this case, 10 and 20. The variable names x and y are called the identifiers and are linked to the corresponding memory locations. In this case, x pointing to location 00001 and y pointing to memory location 00002. You can get the memory locations of the variable using, in Python, the id command. As you can see here, this will return the memory location. To create variables in Python, you simply declare the variable longs along with their corresponding values. It is good practice to declare them first and then assign them values later, as you can see here. Variables are declared and then assigned values, and then used finally in a calculation with results outputted. When creating a variable, the ID name must follow the simple rules, as you can see here. A variable name must start with a letter or the underscore character. A variable name cannot start with a number. A variable name can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscores. And variable names are also case sensitive. So for example, small case age, age is different to uppercase age. What is a data type? A data type defines the nature of data a variable will store. There are several used in Python. They are string, integer, real, float, or boolean. A string will store text, an integer being a whole number, for example, the number 293, a float or real being a decimal number, for example, 2.93, and finally, a boolean being two states, for example, true or false, or one or zero. There are problems with data types, particularly when mixing or using variables together of different types. So take the following code. Here we set the variables x and y to integer values. On line three, both the x and y variables values are added together and the result output to the screen. This can happen as they are both from the same family data type, e.g. both are numbers. However, the code on line 4 is incorrect as the text hello is a string data type and the other, the x variable, is an integer data type. They are not the same family data type. This would return an error when run, as you can see here. We can solve this problem using casting 
This means changing the data type. In this program, we can only fix it by changing the integer data type into a string, although this will only add the text number to the word hello. In Python, there are many casting functions we can use to change the data types, as you can see here. Notice the int and float function can take either a string or number to convert. With the int function, any decimal number will be automatically truncated in conversion to an integer, i.e. just removing the digits after the decimal point. In Python, the most common use of casting occurs when requesting number entry from a user. Input from a user is always returned as a string, and therefore in order to perform numerical calculations we need to convert the data type to either an integer or float. In this example we are getting text input from the user and using the int type conversion function to change to an integer data type. This can then be used in the next line of code as part of an output of calculation, e.g. 20 times the value of the variable number. So now we move on to importing and outputting from Python. Now we do this very simply using two commands, the input function and the print function. I've got two examples here. This is one uh, for printing to the screen. So we use the print function. Now remember that Python is case sensitive. So we must make sure that it, the whole command function is in lower case. We then use the brackets and then we add the quotation marks to say this is a string and you'll know you've done it correctly because the string text will change color, in this case green. I've also added a value. Now if you put commas after the string, it will add, it will print that out adjacent to the previous print. So it will say I am <coughs> and then I've added the value 15 years old. I then created a variable called items and then I've inserted items as part of the printout function. So I'm printing out three things there. I have whatever the content of the variable's items is followed by the word items. And then if I want to print using multiple lines in my code, I can simply do this using the three quotation marks. If I now run this, you will get the following output. There you go. And as you can see there, I printed on multiple lines as I have done in the print. Now that's the outputting. For inputting data, which is pretty much the same, we use the input function using the brackets, opening and close brackets, and then we enter the string that the program wants to output as part of the question as the input. And then the input function will return a string input, whatever the user inputted, and then I assign it to the variable country. I do the same again for the second one, county and town. And then using the contents of those variables, i.e. what the user's inputted, I put it in my print statements, as you can see here. So I'm saying you live in whatever country the user entered, whatever county they entered, and whatever town. I've also got this thing called concatenation. Now you might remember that we can't mix data types. Now we've done, we're not mixing data types here because they're all text, and we've put comma, which doesn't matter what the data type is. However, if we want to add the strings together, we have to make sure they're all strings. Now, the advantage of doing this is I can add, store all this in one variable and then output it. And if I run this, you will get the following outputs. So it's asking me to enter my country name. So I'm going to put in United Kingdom, uh, County Hampshire, and city, town or city Winchester. And then it comes up as it, I told it to in the print statement. Now I've done two print statements because one is saying um, using the non-concatenation method and one is using concatenation. And notice the only slight difference is when you do the comma, it automatically inserts a space. So it says you live in country and it's left a space after the variable, after the first bit of text to insert the variable name. Whereas if you concatenate, it doesn't. So that's basic input and output.
So now I'm going to look at further arithmetic in Python and I'm going to specifically look at the following operators that is the multiplication, the modulus, the integer division and the power. So this is a simple program where I'm going to calculate the area of a rectangle. Now notice I've defined the variables at the beginning and are called length and width and I've set them to 0, 0.0. That tells me that these are of type float. And then looking at the next part of the program, which uh, gets the length and width from the user. And again, we get the text input and we're converting into a float. Because it is a decimal number. So we, so we could potentially enter 5.5 centimeters or 6.7 or, or whatever. And then finally, we've got the calculation. So we print the areas, comma, width. So that's the width I've entered times the length. And that will give me the area in centimeters squared. So if I run it, it will ask me for my length. So let's say I put 5.5 and let's say I put 2.6 here. The area is 14.3 centimeters squared. So that is my simple program that I've just created. Now this next program shows us the modulus and integer division. Now the modulus division will give me the remainder. And the integer division will, it's sometimes called the floor operator. It basically removes anything after the decimal, decimal point. So it floors it. And, and using a combination of these, I can do some pretty complex calculations. So again, I've defined my variables at the beginning. So seconds, hours, minutes, and I've set them all to, to zero. Now notice they are integers because we can't, you know, I'm not going to have 5.5 seconds. I'm just going to take the seconds, hours, and minutes. And so we create the, we, we get the seconds variable, which we equal to the input. And again, we convert the input, the, the number of seconds that the user enters into an integer. And then we do the following calculations. Hours equals seconds, integer division by 60, integer division by 60, modulus 60. So that what we're effectively doing is dividing it by 60 and to give me an integer number. We divide that integer division again. So again, we get the, the, integer number which won't have any decimals and then we divide we use the modulus to say okay how many 60s go into this what's left over because that's going to be my hours and then i do the same for the minutes so i take the seconds into division 60 and then take that number and do a modulus to see what's left over and then i take the finally the seconds again and do modulus 60 so we're breaking it down and i use those various variables to then output the answer hours minutes seconds so then if we run it You'll see here, I'm going to put, say, 3,606. That's one hour and six minutes, six seconds. So there we have that. And finally, we've got this, the power, which we're going to use the power. Now, to do power, in uh, the simple way to do the power operator is just do star, star. So I've said, enter the number of bits. So it's an integer, text into an integer. So I have, let's say I have 8-bit number. That will say max number equals two to the power of that number minus one minus one because we start from zero and then i output the result as you can see there also notice that i'm, con I'm doing concatenation here rather than using the comma so i have to convert the max number into a string hence i put str there so if i run it you can say number of bits let's say i've got eight bits so the maximum number i can have is from, is from zero to 255 as it says there Good practice includes use of commentary, appropriate spacing, indentation, and variable names. Here's an example of a badly constructed program. There are many issues here. Firstly, there's no commentary such as what code does or even the title. Secondly, poor variable names giving no indication what they'll be used for. Thirdly, no spacing making the code cluttered and potentially harder to debug. Now let's look at how this program can be improved. We now have an appropriate title at the top explaining what the program does. Notice the hashtag is used to indicate to Python that the following code is to be ignored, allowing us to put comments in. 
Then we initialize the variables, clearly indicating what data type each variable will be storing. In this case, car make model is a string and the other integers. We also have used spacing to separate the different parts of the program. This makes it easier to read and debug as less clustered. The backslash used allowing you to go onto the next line while still in the same line of code. Finally, we have changed the variable names to make them more meaningful. So adding all these elements together provides a much more meaningful and readable code.